I know it's not your first time here in Russia, mm -hmm. so tell us please, what was your first visit like? Uh, I came to Russia first in 1999. Uh, I worked for the American Embassy, so um, I was just kind of a helper there and kind of getting the life experience and, and having an adventure. So it was, it was a good experience coming from Texas and I enjoyed it and I've been coming back ever since. Mm -hmm. Has it all changed a lot to you? What are your impressions uh, right now? Um, you know, the architecture stayed the same, which is great, you know. I think Moscow's got some of the best architecture of any city I've been to. You know, I love going down and seeing the cathedrals and Red Square and, and the Kremlin and stuff. Um, but it's obviously it became more modernized. There's skyscrapers, there's big buildings, there's a lot of more uh, new buildings and, and structures. So it's growing fast, but, uh, you know, it still has that, that same feel as it did. 16 years ago. Uh, do you usually visit Russia just for yourself or it's like more business trips? Uh, well, I, I enjoy coming to Russia personally because I lived here and I enjoy the culture, I enjoy the, the people, I enjoy uh, the environment. But now with, with having the gym, aka Thailand, um, a big majority of the people that come through Thailand and my gym are from Russia. So now it's, it's business and vacation kind of at the same time. Mm -hmm. So as a founder of such a cool gym, uh, what can you say about uh, Russian gyms and teams? Um, well, I mean, my gym is unique and different because of it's my vision. So it's, it's, it's my own vision of what um, I think is kind of a, an ideal gym to train at in, in an ideal location being Phuket. So it can't really compare to other gyms in the fact that it's at its unique location and uh, all that went into making it what it is and, and, and just the, the different variables. But um, I think the gyms are growing everywhere and there was no gyms for MMA when I first came to Russia. So to now be training at gyms here at like Arena Fight Club where there's actually MMA training and, and, and stuff, that's it's pretty cool. It's, it's good to see it grow, especially here. It took a long time, a lot longer than I thought. It, it got more popular all over the world before I think it hit here. So I think now it's starting to hit and take off and, and get a lot bigger. And do you have any Russian fighters who will impress you? At AK Thailand? No. Um, in oh, in, in general, general Russian fighters. In the whole, yeah, yeah. So many. <laughs> There's so many Russian fighters that impress me. There's so many Russian speaking fighters that impress me that are from some of the other countries around Russia, um, Dagestan, Tajikistan. Um, Chechnya. There's a lot of good fighters from all over, um, but so many. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of great up and coming Russian fighters. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Fedor. I mean, Fedor just fought, but everyone asked me about Fedor, and he's he's been a legend for you know a long time, and he's been kind of an icon uh, of the sport in Russia, and you know he's 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 phenomenal. I think I think he's obviously getting older now, but you know he's definitely one of my heroes. Now let's talk about your biggest and famous child. I mean, a okay, K talent, of mm -hmm. course. Yep. So, how did you decide to set it up and why talent? So, I've been training in Thailand for 16 years, back and forth, and I've never been able to train in MMA because it's all Muay Thai. And then back in 2008, I started doing seminars in Phuket, and they started doing uh, MMA. They actually already had an MMA program, and. Uh, at some of the gyms there, and so it, it, at least it was there, but it wasn't to the level of what I wanted, what, what, what I would have been able to do for my fight camp, you know, like that level of coaching, that level of curriculum, that level of facilities, equipment, everything. So um, I kind of set out to build that gym and, and build that perfect gym in that perfect location. So it was a, you know, it was a dream that took six years in the making, and for the last three years I've been living in Phuket, building the gym, and now it's built. Well, the first part is built, and we are uh, we're thriving. It's it's a lot of people coming through there. Um, you know, it just keeps growing and growing. So it's so exciting to be a part of it. Uh, tell us about your team. Who are they? Where are from? And was it difficult to build them up? We have guys from all over. Um, we have guys that live there full time, like Salim and Nikolai and and Jenna Fabian, and now we have Anastasia uh, Yankova. Obviously, she's a very famous Russian fighter in Bellator. She's coming in and staying full-time and, and training for her next Bellator fight. 
So we have a lot of a lot of uh, fighters on the team that live there, and then a lot that come in. So we have fighters that come in; they live in their countries, and then they come in for fight camps, which is like eight weeks or so. Um, we've had guys like Mark Hunt, Sol Pilelli, Wang Zai, um, Bob Sapp just left fight camp, and he's in China right now about to fight. Um, so we get a lot of guys coming through there. Uh, what about coaches? What are they coming? Coaches, well, I, I help oversee the MMA program, so. I'm like basically what Javier Mendez is in America. I'm kind of the, the, the coach that watches the sparring, does the strategy, coaches, corners, um, and just gives the overall, like I have, I feel like I have a good niche of like telling people what they need to do, even more so than what, what I did in my career. You know, I feel like I have the, a better ability to explain and tell people what to do and how to do it than, than I did actually when I fought. So, you know, I feel like that's my input in the gym is just overseeing everyone's careers and making sure that they're, they're on the right curriculum and doing the right training, uh, preparing for the opponent the right way. And we also have Marcio Cesar Garcinia, who is uh, the MMA trainer and head BJJ coach, third degree black belt and BJJ. And he's basically the, the main guy um, who does all the, the training and the coaching. And he's had close to 40 MMA fights and he's still fighting. So. He's uh, very experienced. He's the only MMA fighter, BJJ coach in, in Phuket uh, at the moment. So we have a, a really tight knit group and, and very good coaching staff. Not to mention our multiple world champion Muay Thai uh, trainers that are in the back and the Muay Thai area that are training guests every day. Is the gym only for professionals? No, that's a good question because a lot of people ask, they're intimidated by the, some of the videos and they're like, we see Mark Hunt there, we see Bob Sapp and Soa and Wanzai and all these big, you know, strong guys. Can I come to your camp? I'm just an accountant, or you know, I'm a businessman, and or or a kid, or a soccer mom. Um, the gym's for everyone, and most of the people that train at our gym are not fighters. They're they're just people that are looking to lose weight, to have a good time, and, and just to try something new. So we actually have a beginner MMA class, which is the only one in Thailand where we do beginner MMA. So you can actually come and train in MMA, and it's very, very safe, uh, very low impact, and uh, beginner level. So you're not having to, to get punched and get beat up and, and, and put through the ring. You can actually experience what MMA is like in a very friendly environment where, where you can learn and have a good time. And who of the most known fighters has, has been training in your gym? Or like I said, Mark Hunt was the, is the most known. Um, he's fighting in the co-main event of the uh, UFC 200 card. He uh, trained at our gym for his Bigfoot fight when he fought Bigfoot Silva. So he did his full fight camp with us. We consider him family. He's he's part of the group. Um, and So Pelelli has trained for a few fights with us. Uh, Wang Zai trained for his first and all of his UFC fights with us. Um, so many guys come through there. Uh, like I said, Bob Sapp, a legend of the sport back in the day, and he's fighting again. He's fighting this weekend in, in, uh, in China. So he's there right now getting ready for that. Uh, and a lot of other fighters coming through. A lot of, a lot of people stop by and just train too. Uh, Paul Daly, um, we've had Marlon Sandro, Leo Santos, uh, Luke Rockhold, who's, who's very known by a lot of people, I think. So we've had a lot of people coming in and a lot of people that are coming soon. Are there any differences between uh, programs and techniques in uh, AK in USA and in Thailand? Yeah, you know, it is actually different. So I've modified the training quite a bit because we have an entire Muay Thai program in Thailand that we don't have at AK headquarters. So uh, we have actually more facility, more equipment, and more trainers than we do at headquarters. Um, obviously, the difference is we have our stars and our superpowers at the headquarters in San Jose because they've been there for 10 plus years and, and, and they're leading the, the, the game right now. So what we're doing is we're just kind of starting what we did 10 years ago at AKA headquarters and we're building those champions now, the Luke Rockholds and the Dan Cormier's and the Cain Velasquez's. But I will say, um, and Javier, the, the founder of AKA actually agrees with me, we have a bigger talent pool here or in Thailand than we did in San Jose. So we have more people coming in with more shared talent um, to Thailand than we ever had at AKA headquarters. So what happens is with the AK curriculum is you, you put all these people together, these guys that are champion kickboxers and uh, wrestlers and 
BJJ guys and you mesh them together in this curriculum and then they just train together, you know, the sparring, the training, the grappling, the wrestling, basically what our curriculum is and then they learn from each other. So uh, the champions are the ones that rise to the top, you know, they're the Luke Rockholds, right, who came in with just jiu-jitsu and started learning how to strike. He started taking out, uh, you know, striking lessons with Javier and, and working with him and, and working with some of the strikers and, and adapting a style that fits himself. And he's a great example because in order to be successful in the sport, you have to be different. You can't just follow what someone else does because, like Fedor, like I can't say I want to be like Fedor and train like Fedor and be Fedor. Fedor is Fedor because of his body, because of his mind, because of his, you know, what he was born with. And then his training is a comp. It's it's basically complemented whatever he had naturally. So guys like Luke Rockhold, you know, they they're able to adapt and create their self into a unique fighter like Fedor or like Kane or like DC where they're not trying to be anyone else. They're just taking um, some of the best moves from each discipline and utilizing it in their own style. I think Luke's style is very unique. You know, DC's style is very unique. Kane's style is very unique. And I think you need to do that to make it to the top. You, you can't chase uh, being someone else. You, you have to be yourself. You have to build yourself and create yourself. And that's what, that's what we're doing. Recently, the UFC ranked you as the 165th uh, fighter, mm. greatest fighter of all time. Mm -hmm. Do you miss your fighter career? Yeah, you know, I was I was really excited about that. I know 165 sounds like a high number, but when you break it down to like, you know, there's a bunch of divisions in there and, and a bunch of different weight classes and 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 you know, it, that was a big compliment. I mean, if you break it down to welterweight or middleweight, that's top 20. You know, so that's. That's really good, and uh, I appreciate that they did that. Actually, I never see myself as, even when I was high ranked in the UFC, I never, I never thought about it. I never put put any emphasis on that. I just enjoyed having fun and, and enjoying the, you know, adventures of, of the sport. But yeah, I miss the career. I miss fighting, but I don't want to fight if I'm not able to fight at my best. And I know I can't do that. So I'm bowing my head and moving on, helping create new fighters and build business. And what fight in your career you consider the most difficult? What fight? I think my Yushin Okami fight was the most difficult. Um, that was the fight that was to grant me, I was actually supposed to fight Anderson Silva for the title and Travis Luter won the TV show and that was part of the deal for Ultimate Fighter for that season was the winner got a title shot so he jumped ahead and I had to take a, a fight in the meantime and I chose Yushin Okami who was a phenomenal fighter, very strong Japanese guy, and uh, it was a very tough test. And I fought in my hometown of Houston, Texas. So that fight was what was going to get me my title shot with Anderson Silva. It was a very close fight, and it was my hardest because I had to dig so deep to fight someone so strong and so good at what he did. He was good at takedowns. He was good at control. Um, he controlled me the first round, so it went to him. I countered it the second round and and almost finished him, so it went back to me. So going into the third fight or the third round, it was it was that struggle of, of, of who who was more dominant, and he got a takedown, and, and I couldn't get him off and, until it was too late. So you know, I, I lost the fight. It was close. It was a, it was a struggle from start to finish. It was frustrating. Um, so I consider that my toughest. And and it was in Houston, Texas, where I'm from. You know, my family, all my friends. You know, the crowd was cheering and hoping I won. So I think that was a tough one. Who impresses you most in the UFC history? I don't know. So many people, you know. It's a thing. There's a lot of great fighters out there that's impressed me, um, and on different levels too. Like there's guys that I'm impressed with their ability uh, technically. Uh, guys I'm impressed with their fortitude and their strength and heart. Uh, and there's guys that I'm just impressed with the fact that they're they're showing. You know, like the Conor McGregor's and the the Ronda Rousey's. Um, overall, guys like Luke, honestly, like Luke Rocco, like he, he's one of my favorite fighters because he's adapted so well and created a style, um, and, and he's just an overall really well-rounded fighter. So he's not one of these guys that has to go out there and get a, a knockout with an overhand right or rely on a submission or rely on anything. He, he can win the fight pretty much anywhere, and I think that's a very dangerous opponent and definitely an exciting opponent to watch because you never know how it's going to win. What do you think you like more, to be a fighter or a coach? Um, at the time, a fighter, you know, but right now, um, 
coaching is fun, you know, and it's not, it's not just coaching for me, it's building the gym, you know, it's the business side of things, it's the expansion and building of AK Thailand, um, getting the fighters fights, managing the fighters, uh, marketing, I love the marketing, I love the videos, I love the social media, um, there's so many things I like about building this business, so there's a lot of things, this is definitely what I want to do right now, this is the perfect job for someone who, who was a fighter before. But during the prime of a career, a fighter is what everybody wants to be, I think. Uh, you had a project with Skull real quick. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. What, what goals does it have? The video. Uh, about the video series called Real Quick that the UFC started, Dana White started it actually, back in 2005, I think. And we did a few episodes, it was, and uh, it was good, we had fun, but we ran out of ideas, and I was busy with my career, so we kind of just let it go. And I just recently brought it back to kind of showcase what life is like at AK Thailand. So it focuses on different uh, scenarios that take place at AK Thailand. Uh, in our first episode, we did Song Krong, which is a, a holiday fest festival in, in Thailand where we, everyone shoots everybody with a water gun. So it's very interesting to, to people who haven't seen an entire country go into a water fight before. Um, so we captured that. Um, Episode number two, we did like just some local uh, excursions at like a wake park. And in episode three, I brought people an inside look of what it's like to be a Muay Thai fighter. So we have a lot of these guys that come into AK Thailand that are just fighters and they don't really have, they're not thinking too far ahead. They're just taking fights, living the life and enjoying Phuket. And one of them is Ad Earnshaw, is a good friend of mine. And so I wanted to capture kind of what his life was like. So. Uh, I showed him training and fighting. He had two fights in nine days, and then we went out and, and celebrated. And we kind of gave people a glimpse of what fight life is really like in Phuket. So people really appreciated it. The video got a lot of views, and so as soon as I get back, we're probably going to do another fight-related video soon. So what are your global plans? Global. Well, first I'm going to work on AK Thailand. That's number one. Um, we have to get AK Thailand to become a success on a really high level for me to be satisfied. So I spend day and night working to try to make that happen. Um, and success in so many ways, um, obviously in growth and uh, the, the winning of fights for our, for our fighters and the growth of their careers, uh, financially, um, everything. You know, I want this to be one of the most successful gyms in the world. And uh, I'm very picky. And so uh, I think it's gonna it's gonna get there. I really do. So now you can tell a wish something to your Russian fans. Uh, I want to say thank you to all the Russian fans. Um, we've we've had a tremendous amount of you come through AK Thailand, and it's great to come back here for the first time in many years, and actually meet so many people that's been to AK Thailand. People that I remember, people that I don't remember because I haven't, didn't even maybe meet them when they were there. And they're showing me pictures of themselves at AK Thailand, and, and they're wearing AK Thailand shirts. And to go to, to Russia, to come back to Russia, uh, ten years later, and to see people wearing AK Thailand shirts that they got at my gym in Thailand is pretty crazy, you know. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys, and I appreciate it. I think if you go to our social media, you go to my Facebook page, uh, Facebook forward slash Mike Swick or forward slash AK Thailand, and you watch our videos, you'll see that it's a very very unique experience there and very different than what you might expect. So um, I think it's, it's worth the visit. It's worth you guys coming down. And I'm sorry for whoever has to translate this because this is a lot of talking. So bear with, bear with the poor guy who's, who's talking for me right now. Thank you, Rich. Spasiba Bolsha. Send me Russian the whole time. <laughs>